Redwood trees are amazing. They're so majestic when you walk through the groves and see these huge columns of, of wood just rising into the, the heavens above. They're one of the longest lived trees on the planet. They can grow and thrive for over 2,000 years. Well, this is the first time in about 30 years of studying redwoods that I've had the opportunity to study a trait, a feature of redwoods that I guess it really um, reminds us of why the tree is named Sequoia sempervirens. Sempervirens mean, meaning like ever living. Well, an update tonight, California state parks will be reopening limited parts of the western coastal region of Big Basin. The park has been closed since last August following the CZU Lightning Complex fire. The wildfire there burned more than 97% of the park, destroying nearly all of the buildings, all of the campgrounds, and lots more. So when we first visited the park eight months later, we were really amazed by the extent of the damage we saw. These enormous trees totally burned out from the insides. Trees that once had spreading branches reduced to 200 foot limbless posts. It was also immediately clear to us just how many of the trees had in fact survived. We saw extensive sprouting at the base of most trees. And in some cases there was this fuzzy carpet of green sprouts extending 100, 200 feet into the air. And those sprouts were what we were there to study. The thing is, redwoods are super fire adapted and they have this sort of remarkable ability to re-sprout following fire. And so really the goal of our research was just to sort of go out there and try and understand how they do that physiologically. When plants photosynthesize carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, they can use that carbon to grow, but they can also store that carbon in their tissues as sugars and starches and they can store those sugars and starches for many years. So what we wanted to do is look at how old the carbon fueling new sprouts is, because we know that it's possible these trees that could be a thousand years old or older could have been storing carbon for a very long time. Concentration spikes super high. The tricky part with trying to measure the age of these sprouts is, is they're constantly adding new carbon. We want to know sort of the age of the carbon that was used just to kind of get that whole process started. I would find the littlest ones I could that were just barely poking out of the dirt and harvest those and then cover the location where I took them from with insulation so that no light would get in and they couldn't photosynthesize. So as they grew back, we knew that any carbon in those new sprouts was coming from the tree, the main tree, and not from new photosynthesis. The Macadus that we have here at Northern Arizona University is the first in the United States at an academic institution. MACADIS is an acronym. It stands for Mini Carbon Dating System. The MACADIS measures the number of radiocarbon atoms in a sample. Radiocarbon dating is how you determine how old things are. So to measure the number of carbon atoms in a sample, you first have to turn your sample into graphite. The graphite is then hit with an ion source, which makes it negatively charged atoms and those carbon atoms are then accelerated through the instrument to the final detector at the end, which measures radiocarbon. And what we saw was uh, some of these sprouts could have carbon that was as old as 21 years. And that means that that's the average age, and it's really a mix of many different ages. But with some modeling that we've done, we can see that a reasonable amount of the carbon that is being used is probably at least 50 possibly even 100 years old. The study is about understanding better the details, really, at the sort of chemical level, almost, of, of how it is these trees are able to come back and rebuild a crown of vigorous green foliage after losing everything.